What is going on, guys? This is the Inside the Boot Podcast, episode number 16. And today we're breaking down the New York Rangers and playoffs are right around the corner. The Rangers only have one game remaining on their schedule in the regular season, and that is against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, you know, that's a game that's kind of meaningless for both teams. You know, both teams are already close to playoff spot. Toronto's playing the Tampa Bay Lightning, and, you know, the Rangers have to wait on, you know, who their opponent's going to be, whether it's the New Jersey Devils, who currently hold the second spot in the Metropolitan, or the Carolina Hurricanes, who currently hold the first spot in the Metropolitan. It'll be interesting, but if I was a betting man, I would fully expect the Rangers to be playing the New Jersey Devils uh, in round one. Um, I feel like that's just kind of what it it meant to be. You know, Rangers versus Devils, two young and -and up-and-coming teams in the NHL battle out you know, a good series, and that's just what I expect. You know, I expect the, you know, Hurricanes to have their series against uh, whoever's the top wild card in the uh, Eastern Conference, and, you know, the Rangers will, you know, battle against the Devils. But regardless, we look at these two teams, and they're still super good. You know, the Devils, young and upcoming team, Jack Hughes, uh, you know, really good year out of him this year. You know, he is super good and has really shown you know why he's one of the best centers in the league now. You know, you can honestly argue he's he's a top five center in the league. You can honestly argue that now. You know, with the season he he's had uh this season. You know, he breaks this you know, the point record for the, you know, New Jersey Devils. Uh now he holds that, you know, as the franchise leading point record in a season, and that's really good for Jack Hughes. You know, he's a guy that you know, got banged around a lot in, you know, his first few seasons. But now it's it really, you know, he's got what it takes now to be a really good player and a dangerous uh, dangerous uh, threat. You know, he's a really good guy. And, you know, he's, when he's got the puck, he can really, you know, use his skill to his advantage against other players. You know, he's, he's not the heaviest player, but he's really shifty. And he's got a really nice shot as well. And he's, you know, had the Rangers pay the price a few times now with... You know, Jack Hughes, he's really made the Rangers pay the price, and that's why he's just so dangerous. Um, You look at the numbers this season for the Devils, they're a really skillful team, and they got even better at the trade deadline, trading for Timo Meyer. I expected it, you know, once Timo Meyer became available. It just felt right, you know, with the cap situation with the Devils and, you know, them trying to be a better team, it just, it made, it made a lot of sense for the we, uh, sorry, the Devils to land the sweepstakes of Timo Meyer, and they really didn't have to give up much. You know, I expected them to give up, you know, maybe Holtz or Mercer or some other top prospect, but I didn't think they really gave up much uh, to land Timo Meyer. And you know, they're gonna have to give him an extension as well. But I fully expect Timo Meyer to accept uh, a contract extension. And you know, you look at the stats for the New Jersey Devils; they are averaging three point five one goals per game that is ranked fifth in the nhl Uh, out of the 32 teams they allow 2.69 goals against that is ranked 10th uh sorry seventh in the nhl out of 32 teams they got a 21.6 percent power play that's still very good uh and an 82.5 percent penalty kill solid numbers i mean those are good numbers If if you have a 20 percent or more power play you usually have a pretty you know threatening power play and you look at the devils uh you know the devils they're a guy they're a team that could really make you pay the price if you're in the box a lot and you know if the rangers play them that's one of the main factors is to stay out of the box because you know they could really make you pay and put up a lot of goals on you if you if you uh are in the box and you know they got the talent to do that uh you look at the carolina hurricanes you know, they got Noel Svechnikov. He had a brutal injury. You know, hopefully he recovers well. But they will they will be without him. And, you know, it, it really relies on the stars of Jacob Slavin, uh, you know, Marty Natchez, Sebastian Ajo, Tivo Teravainen. I mean, a lot of guys that need to step up if they want to go far in the playoffs. And, you know, they're a team that is really good defensively. You know, they're good offensively. We know that, you know, a lot of them are having good years. But defensively is where they mainly, you know, that's their strong suit is to be a very good defensive team. And their leader is Jacob Slavin. You know, he's one of the best, you know, defensive uh, defensemen in the league. 
or just honestly, I am just defensive defenseman, really just a good defenseman. Uh, you know, stay at home, you know, really good defenseman regardless. That's just what Jacob Slavin is. Uh, you know, he's not the guy that's going to put up, you know, 70 or, you know, plus points like what Adam Fox does or Kyle McCarr or even Eric Carlson, who's having a career year this year. But, you know, they're just a really good team that's ran by Rod Brittenmore. He's done a really good job with them consistently now at the top of the Metro. And, you know, he, they were honestly my pick for the President's Trophy this year with the Carolina Hurricanes. I just really liked how they're built, you know, their defensive system. They could score. And they can keep the puck out of the net. They got some solid goaltenders as well. Pitor Kochekov or Freddie Anderson or even Antti Ranter. You know, all three of those are having solid years. And, you know, I think that's another thing that separates the, the Devils and the Hurricanes. is The Devils, they have goaltending that could win you games for sure. Uh, you know, Vitek Vanacek, he's had a strong year. You know, traded from Washington. You know, is on the New Jersey Devils and gives them a really solid year. And, you know, the playoffs are just what, you know, is my question mark for Vitek Vanacek. You know, he hasn't had great numbers uh, in the playoffs. Small sample size, though, you know, with Washington. But, you know, he's got, he's got a 1-1 record, 855 save percentage. That is definitely alarming. And 4.25 goals against average. But those are just small samples, you know. We don't know what you can, you can get out of VTech if he plays a full seven games. Um, if it goes to seven games, obviously. But it'll be interesting. That's my big question mark with the New Jersey Devils is playoff experience and goaltending. You know, I think the rest they could really handle, you know, with scoring and keeping pucks out of the net. They've done a pretty good job at that. But, and I'm not really too worried, you know, with the Rangers being not on home ice for games one and two. You know, they've they've been a pretty pretty good road team uh you know this season. It's not like they've just been brutal on the road and good at home. Uh you know, they, this is a team that could play g- good at both both arenas. You know, whether it's the Prudential Center or it's at MSG. You know, they really bring it to you and it's going to, you know, take everybody to beat whether it's the Devils or the Hurricanes. Um, and you're going to have to play against, uh, you know, two solid teams. You know, whether you're playing against Rob Brittenmore's team or Lindy Ruff's. You know, Lindy Ruff has been in this league for a long time, and he's one of the best to do it. Um, you know, obviously both coaches have, you know, historically a good record. And... You know, I think with this Rangers team, a lot of players have had good years as well. You know, and I think the main guy to point out is Mika Zibanejad. I think he's been the MVP of this team. You know, Mika March is truly a thing. You know, whenever it's March, he really turns it up. But Mika Zibanejad, he's honestly, he's been getting better every season. You know, this is a guy that has improved his two-way game tremendously. And I think this year was really... A sign of that. I think, you know, what what he did this year really helped the Rangers. He's got 39 goals on the year. Outstanding work out of Mika Zibanejad. Um, and, you know, his career high was 41 in 2019. That's when Mika Zibanejad was just on a tear that year. Just scoring left and right. Um, but I think, you know, his two-way game has been really good. And he's a guy to watch out for the playoffs. For sure. I mean, you know, when he elevated his game in the playoffs, you know, the Rangers were a really good team, and he's going to have to do that again. You know, he's going to have to elevate his game to an even better level than it already is. Um, But, you know, regardless, it's going to be tough to beat his 41 goals. He's got one game remaining against the Maple Leafs, and, you know, we don't know what Gallant's going to do. You know, who's resting, who's in, who's out. Same thing for Toronto, you know, who's in, who's out. Uh, You know, it's a meaningless game for both teams. You know, they don't need these two points. It's not going to change the outcome of the standings or or anything. You know, Tampa Bay is playing Toronto. Toronto knows that. Tampa Bay knows that. It's going to be a good series, that series. You know, last year we know what happened that series. Uh, You know, Tampa Bay got the better half of them. And, you know, it's also interesting, who is going to knock off Tampa Bay this year? You know, they've gone to the Cup three consecutive seasons. 
uh, losing one of those and obviously winning two. Is it the Boston Bruins? Is it the Rangers? Is it the Devils? Like, who is going to knock off Tampa Bay? You know, that's my that's my question as well. I mean, who who is going to do it? Because, you know, Tampa Bay, as long as Andre Vasilevsky is their goaltender, I don't bet against them. You know, T- Andre Vasilevsky, he's still Tier 1 of my goaltenders. You know, my Tier 1, I've said it before, it's Igor Shesterkin, Ilya Sorokin, and Andre Vasilevsky. If you have one of those three in that, they're going to give you the best shot to win the Cup, in my opinion. And, you know, you could say Olmark, but I don't know. You know, I don't know. Olmark is interesting to me because... Um, you know, it's it'll be interesting. Because Olmark came out of nowhere this year, you know, with what he did. Even that Boston Bruins team did... What nobody expected to. Every a lot of people I know a lot of people around the hockey industry setting thing. Boston's missing the playoffs. They're getting too old. McAvoy was out for a while. Brad Marchand was out for a while. And um, but it's Patrice Bergeron's team, and he's done a phenomenal job his entire career. He's done a phenomenal job, and I I give a lot of props to Patrice Bergeron. You know, he's a really good captain. You know, he does whatever it takes to win. He's one of the biggest reasons why Boston is still an elite team. They're still an elite elite team on the faceoff dot, and he has a big contribution to that. Um, but it'll be interesting. You know, I, I expect this Rangers team to go a long way as well. You know, I think the big factor was skill last year. I think that's why they honestly got beat last year. I don't think it was grit. I don't think it was toughness, any sort of that. You know, they had great players, but I think they got even better players. You know, Vetrano and Cop were great. I, I really liked those additions. Um, you know, but I think getting Patrick Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko is going to be a huge boost. And by no means are we getting prime Patrick Kane and prime Tarasenko. No. But we're still getting two very solid players that could lift your game to another level. And we, we know that. You know, Patrick Kane is still one of the best passers in the league. Tarasenko still has a really elite shot. He's shown it before. Uh, you know, in the shootout, he showed it. Against the Flyers in overtime, he showed it. Against, um, I'm probably missing something. But he's just really good at shooting the puck. Um, and that's just why he's so good. His shot is really good. His hockey sense is really good. And that's just what makes him a really good player. But, you know, the thing that I would like to see the Rangers do is get a lot of gritty goals against whether it's the Canes or the Devils. That's going to win you a playoff series. It's just the gritty goals. It's not always, you know, the nice bar down shot or the post in in or the one-hand deke or the miss, whatever, whatever. Not always a nice goal. You know, sometimes the gritty goals are the ones that win a series. Like the goals in front. You know, those are what it what happens. But don't, you know, overuse your skill as well. And what I mean by that is you have great skill, but don't do the nifty, you know, between the legs pass or anything. Keep it simple. Play simple hockey and you could be pretty successful in this in these playoffs. But it's gonna take out everybody, including Igor Shesterkin. I'm really glad he found his game. Um and that shows, you know, what type of goaltender Igor Shesterkin is. He show, he finds his game really quick. You know, we saw it last year. Went down 3-1 to one against, against Pittsburgh. Finds a way to find his game quick and, you know, wins the series in seven games. You know, in, in Carolina, they lose a tough game. You know, Ian Cole gets a game winner. Uh, they go down 2-0, right? And then just things change, you know. And, you know, this is a team that just doesn't give up. You know, it's no quit in New York. It will always be no quit in New York. This team has everything it takes to win a Stanley Cup. Gerard Gallant has done an amazing job with this team. I've been really pleased with what Gerard Gallant has done, you know, in his uh, few seasons. You know, he's got two 100-point seasons under his belt, two straight playoff appearances, He's gotten an Eastern Conference appearance. Um, obviously, things didn't go his way. They lost in six to the Tampa Lightning. But things could change. And, you know, this is a guy that brought 
and a whole entire new franchise to the Stanley Cup. You know, that Vegas team, you know, they didn't always have, they didn't really have too many superstars either. You know, Flurry really carried that team. They had Jonathan Marchessault, William Carlson, you know, not like the most talented players on the earth. And that's just what Gerard Gallant can do. He can turn good players into great players. And that's what I've seen this season. You know, he's turned that kid line into a really good line. You know, that that kid line could be the X factor in these playoffs. You know, with how how good those kids are. You know, you know, Laugh has elevated his game. Kako has got stronger. Heedle has 45 points this, uh, this year. You know, a lot of players stepped up. Trocek, 63 points. You know, I was hoping he can get 65 at most. But to get 63 is a really good sign for the future of Vinny Trocek. And, you know, that's really what I have for today. This has been the Inside the Boot Podcast. I am your host, Vin. Playoffs are right around a corner. You know, the Rangers, hopefully we can get some good playoffs out of these Rangers. And as always, this has been Vin breaking down the New York Rangers as always, so long and stay, stay stay safe out there, guys. Thanks. Peace.